Testing directives with external templates is fairly trivial if you have the right Karma configuration. We're going to start by installing the additional node module we need, which is the ng-html to js preprocessor. Add save dev, so that gets added to our Karma package. What this is going to allow us to do is update our Karma configuration, which I've already done in advance here. And there's three things I want to point out. One is the preprocessors block. And we add this preprocessor to apply to all the HTML files within the app directory. And then we have the ng-html to js preprocessor block. And we specified a module name here. I typically call my module name templates or maybe a module that I'm already using in my application. This will be important in a second. And then the other gotcha with it is we have to pull in all the HTML files in our files block. In this case, I do pull them in before the test. Once you have that set up in your Karma configuration, it's trivially enough to set up your spec. So I've already set up the text and sub spec. And it's a fairly simple directive. As you can see here, it takes in two arguments, text and sub. They're both at-based arguments, which means they use uh, one-way angular binding going into the directive. Let's take a look at the template for this guy because that's going to be more important than the actual directive. So you can see it has a class text and sub, an h3 and an h5 and they're bound. Uh, the h5 doesn't show if sub is not defined. So those are the things we're going to be testing. Now the templates module is something we need to pull in for our configuration. This is where our templates are loaded. So I'm adding that right here and we specify that in the module name in the Karma configuration. I've also added the element to the body, but then I've grabbed a version of the element to make sure it actually gets uh, compiled out into the body and has the elements that it specifies within it. I also empty the body after each test. I've set up five expectations for the things we're expecting this directive to do. So let's write those up, test them using the jQuery selectors. So the first one we want to do is we just want to make sure this thing is in the DOM. So we can actually see that the element selector.length is equal to one. We want one of them in the DOM. And in this case, we want to render out the text, which is going to be set on the scope. So it's called scope text is the value we've set up here, and scope sub over there. And we'll call this jungle land. We're going to digest so the angular lifecycle occurs. And then we're going to create an expectation, expect equal. And it's going to be element.find. The h3 is where the text lives. Text to equal jungle land. Then we're going to do the same thing with the sub. Call that little Stevie. And we're just going to take the same thing. It's just going to be the h5 element in this case. It's the only difference down there. And then this, of course, is going to be little Stevie right here. Okay, and then the other thing is that it has a show or hide option on the scope sub when it's not defined. So what we can do is we can create an expectation that this thing is false in the default case, which is where it's undefined. So we'll do is visible. And that should be false because it's hidden when it's undefined. And then when it is defined, like here, we want this to be true. So that deals with all the cases for this simple directive. Let's run our test. Twenty-two unit test passing. 